Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of 5 Things That We Learned After City's 2-0 victory against Everton in the FA Cup quarterfinals. Wembley awaits for Pep Guardiola's inevitable blues. Constantly going to Wembley. It's our second home. We're going to talk about 5 things that we learned from that game before... Before I introduce you all to one football, if you don't know about one football by now, where have you been hiding? There's a reason over 10 million people use this wonderful, delightful little informative app about the game that we all love. It's got all the stats, all the information, and all the updates from the world of Manchester City and the wider world of football in general. And it comes to your phone, uh, sends all the notifications to your phone for free and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to help support this channel a little bit and you want to help it nourish your football knowledge and get the best app on the market, bar absolutely none, about football go and download one football right now by going into the description of this video clicking that link downloading it and enjoying it go and do it right now right let's get on to what we learned from this game there's loads of talking points of course i can't cover every single thing and i've already gone uh, uh and done i've already made two videos on it i've got the fan view from yesterday as well so you can go and watch that where i talked to some of the patrons and members about city's performance yesterday and of course i did my personal match reaction which you can catch as well where i put my undiluted thoughts on the game and what it meant for Manchester City yesterday. But I'm going to start initially, though, uh, with this particular point. KDB, man, he's back. If there was ever any doubts about Kevin De Bruyne being brilliant, well, he, he, I wouldn't say he smashed him. He's just sent him into space, into orbit. Just to think that some people were genuinely trying to argue that KDB might not actually be in our best 11 anymore. <laughs> I know people like to kind of react to things too quickly, but the idea that people was, was people entertaining that shows you just how quickly we can get caught in a Twitter nonsense bubble very, very quickly. Kevin De Bruyne is world-class, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Yes, he was a little bit rusty when he came back, but you carry on playing him because he's Kevin De Bruyne, and he deserves the right to be rusty while he finds his form again, because when he does find his form... He's Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, what more can I say? He's literally, he, he's literally Kevin De Bruyne. He's absolutely incredible. Last night, his impact he made from the bench. I mean, wonderful stuff. Uh, involved, of course, quite heavily with the first goal, though obviously Laporte gets most of the credit there, but he was involved in that. And then, of course, scored a wonderful goal on the break. I guess the point I'm making is that we don't need to underplay the impact that some of these players uh, can have on this team. Um, I want to be positive about this. And Kevin last night was absolutely brilliant. And we definitely need to find a way to fit him, Gundogan and Bernardo into our strongest team because they're all brilliant. Even if it means you play a false nine for now, I know that's tough on Gabriel Jesus and particularly Sergio Aguero. But that's just the reality in the hands that we've been dealt with. You play your better players. At the moment, those three have to be in the team regardless. Kevin De Bruyne is fantastic, and I'm glad Guardiola kept playing him, even though he was rusty, because he's KDB, and he's absolutely immense. The second point I want to talk about is... um. Just don't doubt us, man. Like, I know it's not everyone and I shouldn't let people get to me that uh, moan too much. But the amount of people yesterday having a panic attack because we weren't winning at half time or even up to the 80th minute. Like, when are you going to learn this lesson that this Manchester City side are inevitable? You know, like, uh, when are you going to learn that um, we can trust this City side? When are you going to learn that this City side do know how to get a job done? Of course, every now and then it, it won't be perfect, but it usually is. That is the point I'm trying to make here. We need to hold our collective nerve and have a little bit of faith in this team because they've earned the right to have that faith and that respect because they've been so good for so long um, that we can't uh, can't doubt them at the first sign of adversity. Maybe, just maybe, we should trust in every single one of these players. Don't doubt these players. Don't doubt this manager. Don't doubt our transfers. Don't doubt Manchester City because we deliver pretty much all the time. I know there's a few things still going on and people will turn around and talk about Sterling's form and Jesus and whatever, but in the grand scheme of things, how, we, how important are these small factors? They're absolutely tiny nothing can be perfect all the time and sometimes I feel like people have the bar just raised literally at imperfection which is above this camera just just raise the bar to there at least because we always deliver to about there you know what I'm saying I'm not sure if that's even going to be shot or not but either way the point I'm making is like just have a little faith in this team man have a little faith because we get far too carried away um at times we panic and worry. Don't doubt this team, it's brilliant. The third thing I want to talk about is just Fernandinho. He can stay. He can stay, Fernand. Don't go anywhere, man. Take off your shoes. Go on. Go back in those. You're not going anywhere. Take your coat off. Go and sit down on the sofa. Make yourself a brew. You ain't going anywhere, Fernand. Stay, please. Um <clears throat> 
Fernie yesterday was absolutely excellent. Once again, um, this absolutely magnificent footballer, one of the best signings in Manchester City's history, continues to show just how good he is at the ripe old age of 35, which is a great age if I don't say so myself. Um, he's genuinely brilliant, Fernandinho, and the fact that he's this good at that age is just a t- it's just testament to how good he is as a professional footballer and how much he looks after himself and how much he knows his own game. And even then, yesterday, man, he was all over the pitch. He was like he genuinely had the legs of a 25-year-old. He was absolutely everywhere. One particular run where he went round the outside of the defence and knocked it past and played it across to Sterling was just... Chef's kiss. Absolutely delightful. But that's Fernandinho, isn't it? Uh, ultimate professional. And some of the looks he got yesterday as well from certain players, like his little smiles as he was being up to his shit housey nonsense. I love. And the look that Yerry Meany gave him when he was uh, being Fernandinho. I love it. He's almost like... Um, a devilish respect between the opposition. Like, they may, must hate playing against Fernandinho, but you can tell you, I can tell you right now, they definitely, definitely respect him. They do respect him because he's brilliant and he's ours. And why not keep him for another year, genuinely? If we need to sign another player to, as a backup for Rodri, uh, I'm sure we will do it eventually. But do we really need to replace him next year? Can he not just stay for one more season? I'm all I'm all for it if it means we get the, get a better chance at signing Haaland or something like that. We can put money elsewhere. I mean, it may be that we need to let go while he's on top or whatever but I'm not against it, man. I think he'd be fine. He's, he's a consummate professional. He's fit and healthy, um, and we can't underestimate just how good he is around the dressing room. And the fourth thing that I want to talk about is Raheem Sterling. Can we just lay off him a little bit? Now, basically, once again, I'm getting annoyed a little bit with uh, people overreacting on social media. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But what I will say is when are we going to learn, once again, to not doubt individual players this much? Yes, Sterling is out of form. Yes, he isn't playing that well in particular. And yes, he did have a frustrating season last year as he scored 30 goals, by the way. And yes, he can miss some cities and we're all hurting from the Lyon game last season. But when are we going to just stop ignoring the fact that Sterling Sterling has been brilliant for Manchester City before. And when are we going to stop having short-term memories and not give the player the respect that he deserves? He's one of Manchester City's leading all-time goal scorers. He's been absolutely huge for City over the years. He's been fantastic and scored over 100 goals for the club. And while he's not in the best form at the moment, what is necessarily wrong with that? I don't mind criticism. I really don't. I sit here and criticise players all the time. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'll never tell anyone not to criticise this player, especially if it's warranted with their performance. But what I will say is, can we just keep the criticism proportionate? You know what I mean? Can we make sure it's just not over the top saying he's never going to be good enough, he's useless, he's terrible, get the fuck out of my club, all that kind of stuff. Can we just park that childish nonsense and support a man who definitely deserves our respect? I'm sorry, he does deserve our respect given everything that we've done. I'm sorry, if you say that he's never going to be good enough, despite him being a big part of Manchester City's greatest ever side over the 17-19 over the campaigns, um, then do you know football? Do you genuinely know football? My theory about Sterling right now, what makes him suffer, is that all the weight of expectation for him to be a clinical striker is on his shoulders, and he ain't a striker. He never said he was a striker, but now we expect him to be a striker because we haven't got a clinical striker. Who was complaining about Sterling really missing chances Yeah, between 17 and 19? No one was complaining anywhere near enough. Do you know why? It's not because he was a better finisher. It's because we had Aguero. Aguero was shouldering the burden of the goal-scoring game. I guess the goal scoring weight. Uh, so no one really cared every now and then if Sterling missed the sitter because chances are Aguero had already scored a wonder goal or something like that and he didn't matter as much. As it is right now, respecting Sterling to be our main man at times and shoulder that goal scoring burden, which he can't simply do. And there's nothing wrong with that. We can't expect him to be something that he's not. And yes, he does fall short of those standards and maybe as a result, it's knocked his confidence and his form. But the idea that he's not an intelligent footballer, the idea that he's not good enough and never will be, is just tiring revisionism we know he can be good do you not remember like games like like Napoli in the Champions League when he ran them ragged or so many times where he saved with last minute goals and all that kind of stuff um, Sterling is a fantastic footballer currently out of form we all got to remember last season how many people would have got rid of Rodri at the start of this campaign or Cancelo or even Bernardo when people were saying he was a one season wonder because he flopped last season it's just tiring and we never seem to learn our lesson right now the fair thing to say about Sterling is he's probably out of form and doesn't get into our strongest 11 that doesn't mean we sell him 
It doesn't mean we call him a flop. It doesn't mean we say he's past it. What we do is just need to be calm and let him find his form again. Because Sterling at his best is a terrifying nightmare of a defender, a nightmare of a winger to defend against. Just lay off the abuse, man. Like, not every single one of us is doing it. But what I will say for the wider community, let's just give these players the respect that they deserve and let them have a bad year if it happens. It happens to everyone. It's tough. Maybe he struggled this year for reasons we don't know about. Who knows? But either way, he's earned a right to um, get a little respect from our players and finally i want to talk about something i saw today city are only now 13 games away from something pretty special that is the next amount of games that could potentially see man city win that word that we don't like to talk about the forbidden word quadruple it genuinely is that close now now i'm not saying we're going to do it but i'm getting to the point now where it's not unreasonable to talk about it simply isn't unreasonable to talk about something that is that close man 13 games it's a long 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 time um but at the same time, it's visible. It's not these things where we can't imagine how these games could unfold anymore. We know the route, we know the pathway, and we're already in uh, one semi-final. We're already in one final. We've already got one hand set, one hand on the Premier League trophy, um, and we're in a quarter-final in Champions League. I'm not saying we're going to do it, but I do think it's not unreasonable. Finally, if fans want to, I'm not saying I encourage getting carried away, but if fans want to talk about it. It's only 13 games away from being possible. So it's not actually unrealistic either way. I mean, it's crazy to think this is where we're at, but it's genuinely where we're at. It's that doable in that amount of games, which is absolutely insane to think about. But why not let yourself believe a little bit, man? Don't get carried away. Don't. But if you want to entertain the idea, don't go around telling people we're going to do it, in my opinion, unless you want to look like some visionary and you don't mind getting egg on your face. But what I will say is, like, we are that close to an insane season despite everything that we went through at the start of this season. An incredible turn around and it's crazy to think that this could be our greatest ever season despite that start absolutely sensational this team are brilliant and you better remember that guys thanks so much for watching this video thank you so much to my patreon producer Ahmed al ali an absolute legend and all the names scrolling down the side of the screen patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to help support the channel a little bit and youtube.com forward slash esteem company forward slash join if you want to become a member. For now, though, go and download one football. It's absolutely awesome. And go and check out either of the videos that are currently on screen about uh, the fan view and my reaction from last night. And make sure to hit the subscribe button. Download football, too. In a bit.